pieces of it. The cleaning is not what I'm concerned about fully. It's rust and um, just protecting all the things that normally you would not want to have this oil on. All right, get in there like that, rub it on the outside. And this has a coating on it. I mean, you don't have to do this. It's something I like to do. All right. And then we're going to just set it there. Good deal. Nine mil complete. Did that. So now we'll do the 45 slide. And I'll just shove it down in there. And these cost for like six bucks. And I've had this thing for like three months. It's fucking amazing. And I get it in these uh, grooves in there. Um, the wonderful part about this being a dry lubricant is it actually will lubricate, but it doesn't collect any dust, <laughs> which is fabulous. And it really does work very well. So I get in there, get all that, get all that there, get it, get all that crap out. Um, get that, that chemical whatever the hell it is that lubricates. I don't know what it is, it just works really well. I've had far less um, cleanings and stuff since using this particular stuff. Get down in there, get down in there, and then on the same thing, I'm gonna wipe off the outside. And I mean, truth, truth be told, the coating that they put on this stuff, it will probably never rust. Um, but truth be told as well, it's a carry weapon. It's around a lot of moisture. And uh, this is how I like to take care of my $500 items. So you do yours the way you want to do yours. Um, Sometimes I'll just get in there like that. Just wipe that down. Okay, there we go. And you'll see when this actually dries that it there's no wetness left to it. It's just dry. And that'll just take a few a few minutes to dry, such as itself. And that's it. We're done with that cloth. Back in the bag it'll go to the next cleaning. And usually when I do the barrel cleaning, I, I just wipe, wipe it off of this. That's usually what my cleaning consists of. But uh, for the sake of everything being disgusting, we'll do it like this. All right, tough cloth in. Get your hands wiped off a little bit. Um, this has a little applicator. I just like to use a Q-tip. Um, I use the applicator for my knives that are also expensive. Um, so the lubrication points on the Smith & Wesson firearms are here, 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 um, down right here in this spot right there, inside of there, and then you lubricate around here and the tip of the barrel. That's your lubrication points. And the beauty of a dry lubricant is you get it on there and you get the additional benefit of getting a good, good solid lubricating surface with no um, then what I like to do is pull it in, dab it down in there, dab it in there, and work it just a few times, just a little metal on metal. Little dab will do you. All right. It's actually a little too much, but since it is a dry lubricant, um, we really don't have to worry 
too much about it. Um, I don't use the same side for for any of that. Oh, damn it! I forgot to do the barrel. Oh well. Um, then I set that up like that and let it do the dry lube. And then for the barrel, I'll run it across this whole top. Run it around this exterior part. Just like so, all the way around. Um, and that's where I do it there. And then I'll pick it up. And run it right around there. Make sure it is good all the way around. I'd rather be a little heavy here. It's gonna be a dry lubricant anyway, so it will not pick up and does not pick up any dust. And we'll set the barrel off to the side and that's gonna dry. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Right there. I do like to try to get it down into that metal where it's sliding. Oh yeah. Good lubrication. And I know it, it looks excessive now and but You'll see once we uh, do the thing that it's actually just fine because it's a dry lube, so you won't never, it doesn't stay damp, if you will. All right, and there's that one. Set that there. And then we'll just do the barrel on this. here all right kick fanty and I usually just run it along there because it protects it and you know whatever one thing I like about this dry lube is it's really freaking amazing and there we go Run it up and down the barrel. Good, we are lubricated. And that is all I really do with that. I typically will not do this either, but being that it's that one time a month, I will take this and compress it down. Take a dab in there. And down there and work it down and that's it same thing with the 45 caliber take this push it down all right that's it And then it, it will sit there um, for about 20 minutes and dry. And I will come back whenever it's dry. I'm actually still waiting for this stuff to dry. But I thought I'd show you a few that I picked up. That was a 45 round I shot at a, a big old cinder block. Shattered cinder block, and you can see where it uh, this is the back side where it actually started to separate the uh, brass jacket from the uh, lead, um, the actual lead bullet. And this is a nine millimeter bullet, and um, as you can see where the rifling is right there, um, 
that copper that scrapes off and that lid will get stuck stuck in the rifling. Um, sorry, that wasn't in frame. Um, but you can see in the rifling how it actually will scrape off as it fires through the barrel and spins. And that'll actually get lodged in the barrel and uh, dirty it up. And that's actually a um, 45 bullet. And uh, that's not as bad on that. Um, but still will definitely... Um, you know clog it up after so many rounds so that that's why you um do this and uh i am going to come back on the only thing i did while the camera was off was pick up the cleaning chemicals and um got went and grabbed those bullets to to show you all um and as soon as this dries we'll go ahead and reassemble them and load them up and uh get them ready for the next time I will be back as soon as it's dry. Alright guys, it's uh, about finished drying. I turned the camera back on anyhow. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I had to uh, start it up a little early. It seems like there's going to be a hell of a storm. Um, it's pretty windy out, so... Um, I went ahead and turned this back on so I can plug my phone up while I'm actually doing this. Sorry for the Diet Pepsi noise, I'm freaking parched. I live in North Carolina and it was like 113 degrees here while I was out shooting earlier, so I'm, I'm pretty parched. Mm. I tell you what, um, me and my wife, uh, July 1st through July 11th, went to the Outer Banks and uh, climbed uh, the Bodie Lighthouse, the Currituck, that's kind of, the one on the your far left, the Currituck Lighthouse, I climbed that, and then I climbed the Cape Hatteras. Um, some beautiful views, by the way. If you've never been to the Outer Banks, uh, friggin' amazing time, guys. I loved it. Um, I, I wish I would have probably taken a little more video, but um, I didn't. <laughs> I got caught up in the moment. Um, this is actually some of my ammo um, when I went to shoot today. I actually took out the uh, self-defense rounds for the 9mm. So I'm going to get those back out. Um, and load those in the appropriate clips. And if you don't know the difference, that's your standard uh, round nose 9mm target shot. And um, of course that one has the brass casing. And that is a nasty little hollow tip. Um, silver casing, um, 150 grain. Um, that's a heavy nine millimeter bullet, um, and it's a little bit of a plus P load, so um, would not want to get hit with that. You can talk all the junk you want about a nine millimeter, you would not want to get hit with that. You would be, as they say, D A Y E D, dead. Um, and that's all there is to it. So I still got about 40 target rounds left. I had to come in guys, it was hot out there. I was burning up, I didn't bring enough to drink. So still got about 40 rounds of that. Still waiting on, uh, I shop at midway.com online. Still waiting on my ammunition for them, for my 45. Um, not as pressing for me because if a 45 bullet hits you regardless, you're pretty well going to go down. And that's just how it goes. <laughs> um, and no, I'm not one of them people that um, want to drop the hollow point and fire it in my face. Um, 
definitely would not want to do that. Um, not one of them people that's like, oh, 45, um, a nine millimeter will kill you. <laughs> um, the way I always like to put it, um, any good shot placement will kill you. But um, growing up, uh, my dad, I mean, like I said, he was never really around or anything anyway, but he doesn't know the first thing about shooting a weapon. So, um, I learned by myself, but growing up, my uncle, Chris, who was an outdoorsy type guy, kind of a tree hugger, um, he, you know, his statement, oh man, a nine millimeter, I kill the body, a 45 will kill the soul. And, uh, <laughs> I, I'm in agreement with that. Um, so don't let anybody talk any kind of crap about a nine millimeter. Um, it's a good round and especially it is a good round. Um, if you buy the proper ammunition, um, First of all, it's great for target because it's cheaper than heck. I mean, you get a 200 round box, or excuse me, a 100 round box for 1887. It's 20 bucks with tax out the door. I mean, you can't beat that. I don't care. Where you look, you ain't gonna beat it. So while this is just finishing up drying, I'm gonna kinda let these go down like this right now and finish their thing. We're gonna load up some clips. Oh man, it's torrentially downpouring out there. Holy cow, it's pouring out. Um, I've got three clips for my 45 and two for my nine. Um, uh, clip loader, sorry. And I knew that was gonna happen. Set those in the case where they'll be good. Get the right clip for the right bullets. So we're gonna do the nine first. Stick it in. Now I'm getting aggravated. My poly frames keep falling over and I want them to dry right. Well, I guess it just ain't meant to be for them to stand up. Um, so we'll see how that works. But anyway, they're gonna lay down because um, set that there. Get the bolt to the load. Uh, my wife loves this 9mm. She likes the 45 too. She's just not comfortable yet, um, carrying it. But she could shoot the hell out of it. Um, that's how you load it. Um, yeah, well, if you've never seen one of these, if you wanted to unload it, I, I typically tend to just, just like that, it's got a little lip. However, if you don't have one of these, you should definitely get one. <laughs> it'll save your fingers, it'll save just saves everything. I don't even, when I first started shooting, I didn't really know what these things were and I tell you what, I'd never not have one. It is raining, it's butt off over there. Again, if you want to use it to unload, I do it one more time since it's now raining and I can't cut grass. Uh, it is just torrential. Um, hold it like that. Slide, 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 slide. And that's how you utilize that. They make different styles of these. This has cost you about 30. Yeah, between 25 and 35 bucks, depending on where you get it. Um, 
Like I said, I support my gun shop, so I've probably paid a little more. But uh, I like him to be around because he does right by me on weapons. Um, I order them through Davison, but uh, and, and I, I deal with him with everything else. So, all right. So now we got two full clips. So we're gonna go ahead and set them off to the side. Done with those. Still don't have any actual self-defense ammunition, if you will, for my 45. So we're going to use round nose. Um, but it'll kill you. <laughs> um, this loader will do from nine millimeter to a 45 caliber. Just FYI, in case you wanted to know. All right. One full clip, and I'll tell you, um, you will appreciate this loader and its full glory after you go shoot for two hours and don't have one of these. Because <laughs> I will be the first to tell you, your fingers will be sore as can be. I thought I had a oh, shit. Oh well, I have one lousy extra bullet. What the hell? I thought I shot just enough to have enough to fill those three clips back up. Uh, I actually had two more of these when I left, uh, but I had a uh, 200 round pack and two 45s. And, well, that's what's left of that. Or er, I'm sorry, I had a 200 round pack and uh, two 50 round boxes. That's what I shot in 45 today, which is what's in there. Um, I don't reload the brass. I save it up when that box is full. I ship that crap off and um, you know, get, get you 50, you know, 50, 60 pounds worth and then you get $70. Um, so it's a win-win. Helps out the uh, companies that reload and uh, gives you a little bit more money to buy some more ammo. So now that's how um, the I clean the Smith and Wesson guns, and uh, I'm gonna end that video there. That looks just about dry enough to put back together, so we'll go ahead and put them together real quick. Um, you can tell the rails, this is the 45, it's got more grip to it, and that's the 9mm. We'll go ahead and put the 45 together first. Um, everything is dry there, you can see, smooth on there. And let it in like that. The barrel's still doing a little drying, we'll just tap a little bit of that off. Um, slide the barrel in. Go. Barrels in. And this will finish drying in there. Spring will go in that side toward the front. Pop it right in there. Got a little groove cut right out for it. Can't really mess it up. And that's it, guys. That's your, that's your slide back together. All cleaned up. And then you got your rails. Slide it on, slide it on, slide it back, lock it back with your lever, flip your takedown back. Chamber is empty, nothing is in the barrel, no clip in the bottom. And you are now done cleaning your firearm the appropriate way. Um, Still a little wet on that spot. We're gonna just let it lay there and dry out. Finish drying, if you will. So that's the 45 complete. Nine mil. Same thing. Pick it up. 
slide the barrel in, push it back. Hopefully that's a good camera angle. Same thing, just dab it a little bit there. Still just a little damp on that bottom side where it all ran. Uh, but by the time it's fired again. Um, and that's the uh, storm I was referring to. So, got that in there. There we go. One thing I noticed about the uh, nine millimeter version is you really got to make sure it gets in there just right or it doesn't slide on right. I don't know. Seems to be a nine millimeter thing, but either way. That's good like that. That's good. Got the good dry lube on it. Slide it on back. Slide it back. Keep continue sliding all the way back. I lock it back. Flip your takedown lever back up. It's clean now. Uh, as you can, well, chamber's empty, barrel's empty, no clip. And uh, dab that off just a little bit there. Um, there you go. These weapons are clean and um, don't really have to worry about that anymore. I don't know why. I think because of the way I set the barrels. All that excess rolled down there. I'm just going to wipe that off. I don't need that all there. Just need it a little bit right on that lip there. And, um, good there. And we're good there. And now you have two ready to go clean firearms. And I'm going to go ahead and just do the review video at the same point in time. Um, just to make it easier. So I'm going to cut this off, start over, and then we'll review them.